So to mitigate against, against this kind of attack, you have a couple of options. One option which is less commonly used is to, if you know the mechanism of the attacker, for example, then what you can do, you can configure the switch so that all traffic destined, all traffic received with a specific destination MAC address is going to be silently dropped by the switch. Then we configure this as you say MAC address table static and then you put the MAC address in the VLAN number and then you say drop. So what this means is with that configuration is that when the switch receives now a frame on which the destination MAC address matches the configured MAC address from, from this command and the frame is received from the from the specified VLAN number then the switch is going to silently drop that, that frame without letting anyone know. This is less common because it, it's, it requires a lot of manual configuration, it requires you to know who the attacker is and it's not scalable. Um, a better approach to, to defend against that kind of attack is to configure poor security. Because the attack was possible due to the attacker being able to send a lot of Ethernet frames with random source MAC addresses. So poor security, as the, as the feature states, is going gonna, is gonna to add security to the port, to the switch, of the switch to a layer 2 port. Which what that means that for poor security, you can limit the number of MAC addresses that can be seen or learned on a layer 2 port. An option you can also limit, you can convert that limit to be per domain of data or voice. Because you can have on a specific port connected both an IP phone and a, uh, a data device like a desktop. So you can configure the, the, the port such as saying that I allow maximum two MAC addresses on the port, but then also you can optionally specify uh, but, but it's going gonna, it's gonna to be one MAC address for the voice VLAN and one MAC address for the data VLAN because that's what you need, you need in the end. Because if you just say I'm going to allow two MAC addresses on the port, it means by default that those two MAC addresses can belong for the, in the voice domain or in the data domain and you don't want that. You want to allow one MAC in the voice domain, one MAC in the data domain. Also option we can limit the specific MAC addresses which are allowed on a port where by default, when, when you're going to go on the switch and say that on a specific port, I allow the switch to, uh, to, I allow the switch to learn only, let's say, four MAC addresses, then the first four MAC addresses seen, those are going to be the MAC addresses which are allowed to send traffic inbound on that port. So optionally, the, by default, the switch dynamically learns the MAC addresses, and when it reaches the configure limit, it's going to take the violation action, which we're going to speak about next. But the other option is if you want to be, let's say, better or more secure, is you go on the switch and you also statically define what are the MAC addresses which you allow the switch to accept uh, in traffic from inbound on a specific port. Another option would be that dynamically learned MAC addresses can become static via what is called sticky port security configuration. 